there is power in your words. The word of God says that in the beginning, God spoke, let there be light, and there was light. The word of God talks about how Isaac had to release a blessing and Jacob got it. Jesus talked about how that he will give his disciples power over unclean spirits. Jesus said that if you speak to this mountain and command it to be cast into the sea, then it has to submit, it has to obey. He would also say things like go and sin no more, lest a worse thing come upon you. Or he would say that your sins were forgiven you. And so the power to shift your atmosphere, the power to take dominion, the power to take control, the power to take authority, it is in your mouth. It is in your words. The proverb says that death and life are in the power of the tongue, and they that love it shall eat the fruit thereof. And so if I am a person like Moses, we looked at that today. If I am a person like Moses and I feel inadequate and I feel like I just don't have the words or I feel like I just cannot speak, God told Moses, who made man's mouth? God made your mouth. And therefore, if God has made your mouth, then you want to use what he's put in your mouth, which is his word. Your mouth, your tongue, it is a weapon and it can destroy some things in a good way or it can destroy some things in a bad way. The Proverbs talks about how the tongue, it, it, it is a fire. It is a fire. So it can start some bad fires or it can start some good fires. It can begin to devour the works of the enemy or it can begin to tear some things down. And so we built with our words and we tear down with our words. The things that we need to tear down, we tear them down. The things that we need to build, we built them up. But we have to know that we have to open up our mouths. If I'm a person and I say, well, I can't speak or I'm fearful, then guess what? Nothing's going to change. Nothing's going to shift. I'm not going to have the faith to tell this mountain to go into the sea. I'm not going to be able to speak a word and it be released over in, in Africa or Asia or the Middle East. No. If I don't know that God has given me power in my words, then I'm going to be a silent person. And therefore... Silent is a form of agreement. And so if I'm silent, if I'm holding back praise, if I'm holding back releasing what God has put on the inside, that I am in agreement to my surroundings, meaning whatever is happening, whether that's opposition, whether that's attacks from the enemy, whether that's accusations, whether that's just carnality and sin happening around me. If I don't see anything, if I don't confront what I am seeing, then I am in agreement. And so therefore, I have to actually operate and walk in a power that God is making available to me. So this Satarian, this Satarian, he came to Jesus because he had, I believe he had a sick, a sick daughter. Let's go there real quick. Because he understood the power of words, the fact that he had faith enough to tell Jesus, just speak a word. I don't even need you to come down to my house. Just speak a word. Matthew 8, verse 8, the centurion answered and said, Lord, I am not worthy that you should come under my roof, but speak a word only and my servant shall be healed. So he had a, a sick servant, not even a, a child of his, but a servant who apparently was very special to him. Apparently, this servant was doing their job that he would go out of his way and go and find Jesus. And he told Jesus, I am not worthy for you to come under my roof. But if you can just speak a word, why could, why could he say that? Because he understood that there's power in the words of Jesus. No, all you have to do is speak and release it into the atmosphere. And guess what? That word, that's going to go somewhere. That's going to travel somewhere. Matter of fact, I just finished reading John. And it's very interesting how, as I was reading this, let me go to the next page. How I was reading this, there was, I'm trying to think, where did I just finish reading it at? It might have been. Okay. So John chapter four was where it was, where, okay. So this noble person came to Jesus, right? And 
He came to Jesus because he had a sick child at the house. And so Jesus says that you do not believe unless you see the miracles. And then he said, you know what? Your child is going to live at this very moment. Your son is going to live. He says in John 4 verse 50, Jesus said unto him, go your way, your son live. And so this person begins to react in faith. They go back on their way. And as they are on their way, guess what? One of the servants meet the, the noble man and tells him, your son is healed. And then he began to ask, well, when did this happen? And he said, this happened yesterday around this time. That It says that it happened yesterday. At the seventh hour, the fever left him. And it says that the father knew that it was at the same hour in which Jesus said unto him, your son will live. Wait a minute. There must be power in words. There must be power when we open up our mouths. Yeah, there is actually, your, your mouth is access to doors that God is making available and that God wants you to walk through. Your mouth, are, your, your mouth is a key. Your mouth is an entryway to what is yours in the land. And so the simple fact that Jesus was able to tell this man that it's already done and he moves by faith just to find out that at that same hour that his son's healing took effect in that same moment. And so it shows us how vital our words is. And when we, when we begin to speak over our situation, when we begin to speak against the works of the enemy, when we begin to speak against the works of darkness, then things have has to shift. Things have to shift, especially if we're doing it in the name of Jesus, because we know that there's power in the name of Jesus. Yeah, demons have to bow. They have to submit. The demons tremble at the name of Jesus. The fact that I'm even saying it now, there's a shifting happening. The fact that I'm even preaching now, there's a shifting happening. Things are happening that you don't even know about. While most people are sleeping, there are witches and there are warlocks. There are people that are practicing heavy witchcraft right now. And they understand how words work. The doctors, they understand how words work. That's how they, they're able to diagnose you with something. And to tell you that you have this and to tell you you have that. And a lot of times, it doesn't even be in your body in that very moment. But the fact that it's already been released and you, you've accepted accepted it and then you begin to actually see those symptoms they know how words work and so the sons of God we have to know that we've been given power and that power lies in our words yeah that's part of the armor your mouth your mouth the sword of the spirit which is the word of God well the word of God you know if, if I if I am not speaking this out of my mouth then this is just words on a book this is words on a page but I actually have to meditate on the word of God but I actually have to speak it. I have to speak it. And as I speak, my words are going to go where they're going to go places. They're going to go where they are assigned to go. They're going to go to where they need to go in the spirit. When I intercede, when I pray in the spirit, because sometimes we don't always know what we ought to pray for. And this is why we need the spirit of God. This is why we need the Holy Spirit, because the Holy Spirit gives us utterance. The Holy Spirit tells us what we ought to pray for. And so you don't even know that when you are praying in the spirit, things are breaking. You don't even know that you are breaking chains off of people on the other side of the world. You don't even know that people all the way in Nigeria, they're, they're, they're having a revival. You don't even know. You don't even know that people in England, they're having revival. People in Canada, they're having revival. People in South America, they're having revival. All because of your obedience. All because of your willingness to actually open up your mouth and speak. Yeah. If we understood the power that lies in our mouths and in our words, then we would take more authority. We would not allow the enemy to back us up into a corner. We will not allow the enemy to cause discouragement. We will not allow the enemy to cause anxiety and despair and hopelessness. When he tries to throw darts, when he tries to cause us to think another way, we would we would we would know. We would know how to combat the works of the enemy. We would know how to shut him up because he is a lion. He is a lion, but the word of God says that we are bold as lions. And so although he he is as a roaring lion 
and he tries to intimidate us and he tries to make us feel like we are weak and that we are ineffective. We have to know who we are. And we have to know that our words, it transforms the atmosphere. I have to know that, that if I speak against the works of darkness, then I have to believe that the Lord is doing, the Lord is doing it. He's moving by his spirit. By his spirit. I, have to, I have to know that no weapon formed against me shall prosper. And every tongue which rises up against me, I'm going to condemn. That's what the word of God says. Yeah, because there are people that do not like you. Because you look like God, because you follow God and you obey God. And they, they, they understand how words work. They understand that they travel and that they move and they go places. They don't just stay within the four walls. No, they, they move. They go out into the city. And so they know how to release things over you. I'm not going to lie. Before I hit start on this live, this deep sleep fell on me as I was reading my word. As I was drinking coffee. This deep sleep kept trying to overtake me, but I had to rebuke it in the name of Jesus. You know, that was something that Jesus did. He had to rebuke Satan in Matthew chapter 4. When Satan came to tempt him, Jesus had to use the word of God. He had to use the word of God. Although he is the word, he had to use the word. Why? Because there is power in the word. And eventually he told Satan to get out of his way. Get out of my way. Get, be get behind me, Satan. Yeah, those words shifted the atmosphere. Satan had to leave. And so if I submit to God, resist the devil, then he has to go. If I am in the perfect will of God, if I am in alignment with the truth of God and the, the, the grace of God over my life, then the enemy has to go. And no matter what he speaks over me, it will not touch me. It will not come near my dwelling because I'm faithful and I'm covered. If I abide under the shadows of the almighty God, then I'm going to be protected. I'm going to be shielded. Yeah. I'm going to be shielded. I'm going to be protected. And so I have to know that I have power in my mouth. That also takes faith. That also takes faith because I can know that... I have keys. I can know that I'm going places or I should be going places. But if I don't put forth the effort, I can know that I have to be at this place. But if I don't put forth the effort to get there, then that's not benefiting me. I can have keys like a janitor, but if I don't go and put forth the effort and access these doors, then I'm not getting into nothing. I'm not going to be taking no kind of territory. I'm not going to be going into anything and accessing anything. And so I can know that I have power in my mouth, but you got people who know they have power in their mouth, but they keep their mouths closed because of discouragement, because, of, because life seems hard because of their situation. And so what we tend to do is we have pity parties, we play victim, we start feeling entitled, we start feeling prideful, like the world owes us, like the enemy needs to leave us alone. No, you are in a world a war. You are in a war like Joshua when the Lord sent them into the city of Jericho and the Lord told them to shout for the Lord has given you the land shout in your shout. There's power that shout. I was just looking at that a few minutes ago. I believe that's Joshua either chapter six or seven. The Lord told them to shout. Why can't we just go in and just start gutting people and slicing people? No, I want to do things a different way because there's, you don't realize the amount of power in your shout. Like, first of all, praise confuses the enemy. Okay. That confuses the enemy. He doesn't know what was happening. All, the last time we checked, you were discouraged about your bill not being paid or you were discouraged about your living situation or you were discouraged about your marital situation or what your kids have going on or what's going on going on over here. You, you were discouraged. And so the fact that you press beyond that and not only do you press beyond you, you make it the church, but you begin to actually open up your mouth and you let the enemy know he's a liar. You let your flesh know it's a liar and that it's not going to get in the way of giving God what's his. It's not going to get in the way of you keeping yourself silent, keeping your mouth silent. The enemy would love for you to be quiet and hold back praise and, and not speak to the, the, the enemies, you know. He would love for you to do that. He would love for you to not say anything. But we have to know that in our words, there's power being released. 
there's power being released. So I did want to look at Joshua really quick because the Lord could have simply told them to just take, take your swords, go into the land of Jericho and do what you need to do. Do what you need to do. I was just reading it. I don't know how I lost it. I was just reading it. I thought it was Joshua 6. Let me see. Okay, yes, it was. <laughs> Thank you, Holy Ghost. Because I was just reading it. So, Joshua chapter 6, verse 5. And it shall come to pass that when they make a loud blast with the ram's horn, and when you hear the sound of the trumpet, all the people shall shout with a great shout, and the wall of the city shall fall down flat, and the people shall ascend up every man straight before him. Whoa, all we have to do is do things this way, just blow the ram's horn, and then, and then shout. Yeah, because... You're, you're shouting your praise that confuses the enemy. Shouting, you know, most people don't, don't believe that it's necessary to shout. I heard it said this way, that God is not deaf. And so there's no need to shout in order to get your point across. There's no need to shout in order to get his attention. But I heard that God is not deaf either. And Jesus said that the kingdom of heaven suffers violent and the violent take it by force. And so sometimes we have to get to a place where, how do I put it? We're not, you know, just quietly talking because sometimes you don't necessarily know how serious a person is until their voice starts to to elevate and get louder or they start to shout or yell. You know that this person is overly excited or that they're super serious when their voice begins to elevate, kind of like how mine is doing right now. You know that there's a different response when the tone of the voice changes. And so if I'm shouting like the children of Israel did, if I'm shouting, then that's a level of aggression. That's, that's That shows a level of dominion. No, I am taking ownership right now. Right now, I am in control because I can choose to be silent. I can choose to whisper. I can choose to talk softly and get my point across. But sometimes you take people a lot more serious when they begin to elevate in, in their tone. Like, whoa, okay, this person is very serious right now. How do I know? Because their tone is starting to elevate. Their tone is getting high. As a matter of fact, they're yelling right now. And I can tell they, they, they mean what they say. They're passionate right now. They're serious. They're focused on getting their point across. And so in the shouting, the children of Israel having to shout in order for the walls to fall, there was an explosion happening in their words. That broke something. It was so powerful that it, it, it went through the walls. The walls of Jericho could not hold back the shout that they were releasing, that the children of Israel were releasing. Yeah, it went beyond the walls. It broke through the walls to a point where the walls, they had to come down. They had to come down. So my words, my shout, my shout, when I shout, that's why Sister Liberty doesn't have a voice now because she's been doing some warning <laughs> because I have to know why I need to open my mouth and what 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 is happening when I open my mouth. Yeah, by faith, I already know that things are shifting. No, I already know that chains are falling off. I already know that the shackles are being loose. I already know that that door is being closed. I already know that that door is being opened. I already know that this person is being set free over here. I, I already know. Well, how, how can I say that? Because by faith, I know that my words are not empty. They're not void. They're not void. Yet God speaks a word and his word does not return unto him void. We know that there's power because God, God released that in Genesis chapter 1. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. And the earth was without form. And he said, let there be light. He says that several times throughout the word of God. Let there be. That's him speaking. So we understand that the world, the worlds were framed by the word of God. He spoke it and it happened. That's the same thing with us. We speak it and it happens. Yeah. I have to speak over my flesh sometimes. I have to speak over my headache sometimes. Yeah, when your body starts to get out of line, you use your words and you bring it back into alignment with the word of God and the will of God. Yeah, when that headache arises, you have power. You have to believe that you have power to command it to leave with your mouth. You, you, 
commanded to go in the name of Jesus. How, how can you, because everything is submitted to Jesus. Everything is to, to, is to do to the name of Jesus. And so if I'm having a pain on my side, if my knees want to act crazy, if my elbow want to act crazy, then in the name of Jesus, I command the pain to leave. And I command my body to line up with the word of God and the will of God. Yeah, I'm not subject to my body part. You know, your knees want to act crazy. Your hip want to act like he wants to go out. But you want to give God praise or you are on an assignment for the Lord. You have to command your body to line up with the word of God. No, get in alignment in the name of Jesus. Me, I rebuke you. You, you are not going to hinder me. Headache, go in Jesus' name. Thoughts, go in Jesus' name. Yeah, hips line up right now in Jesus' name. And it has to submit. It has to. Your body has to submit. Your body is subject to you. Your atmosphere you know, when you go to work and your coworkers, they want to be carnal and they want to play ungodly music or they want to talk about ungodly things. You have the power to shift that. I know because I used to put it into practice when I used to work at the bank. Yeah, when I would come in, I would shout. When I would come in, I would speak things in the atmosphere and it would be conducive to me. Yeah, things are subject to you. You don't know that. Your atmosphere is at work. Your atmosphere is in a grocery store. You don't have to... Live a normal life as a Christian just because other people around you are not doing it. No, you live your life as a son of God. And as a son of God, you have power. You have power. Control is, it's in you. It's in your hands, but it's also in your mouth. And so I can release power and glory in the atmosphere. And that's, that's going to take effect. That's going to cause a, a change in the atmosphere. That's going to cause shifting in the atmosphere. Do you know that when Jesus was on the cross and he said, it is finished. He said, it, let me see. He said, I don't know how it was in Luke or Mark because I've been going through the gospels again, but I forget which gospel Jesus actually says it is finished. He says it just like that. And as he does, let me see if it's in the book. As he does, change begins to take effect in the atmosphere. Change begins to take effect in the atmosphere all simply because he said it is finished. Do you know that the veil to the temple, it tore from top to bottom, there was an earthquake in the land, all because he said it is finished. It might be in Matthew. And it was finished. It was finished. Jesus gave up the ghost. He says, He said, Father, into your hands I command my spirit. He did that. He did that. Maybe it's John, because I don't see it in, in, in Matthew, Mark, or Luke. So maybe it's John. Let, let's see. Let's see. He spoke it. He released it. You know, there's power in his words. This is why he was able to speak over his disciples. This is why he was able to speak over certain individuals and, and tell them that they are healed. And you know, the Pharisees begin to question, who gave you power to forgive sin? Like, that's, that's, that's strong language right there. That's strong language. Who are you? You, you don't know what you're saying when you, when you say your sins are forgiven you. That's, that's that's deep, but they could not understand. Hey, thank you, Holy Ghost. Guess what? I found it. I found it. It's John that recorded Jesus saying in John 19, verse, verse 30, when Jesus therefore had received the vinegar, he said in red letter words, okay, it is finished. One of the most powerful three Letter words or three, three words. One of the most powerful three words, probably out of the whole Bible. It is finished. And he bounced his head and gave up the ghost. Gave up the ghost. And guess what? That caused a whole shift in the land. A whole shift to where one of the, the, the soldiers that were near, near the cross, he began to... Pick up on what was actually happening. Wait a minute. Before he was oblivious. He was unaware that this was actually the savior of the world. But once Jesus did that, the earth responded, right? Because you had the earthquake. Then the veil, the, veil, the veil tore. And then he began to realize, oh my goodness. 
This really was the, 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 the savior of the world. This really was the Christ. Yeah. Jesus' words would shift things. And he knew what to say, when to say, and what not to say, and when to not say. He understood the power behind words. Now, sometimes when you are speaking, when you are not supposed to be speaking, your words can get you into trouble. This is why we have to, we have to know how to use our words because it's a weapon. At the beginning, that's why I said our words can cause destruction in, in a bad sense and it can cause destruction, destruction in a good sense. We want to be the kind of people that we are speaking life. We are building with our words. Our words are actually taking effect in the spirit realm. In the spirit realm, they're shifting some things. Yeah. With our words, are we pushing back the, the powers of darkness? We're pushing back the powers of evil. We're, we're shifting things. Yeah, we're pushing back the witchcraft. When they want to release spells and curses and, and chants, yeah, we can rebuke that in the name of Jesus. No. It will not come near our dwelling. It will not touch me. You can release the curses all you want. You can release the spells all you want. But I'm covered under the blood. Matter of fact, I rebuke it in Jesus' name. Yeah. I can say things like let the wicked fall into their own nets. I can say things like the gates of hell would not prevail. Yeah. We're going to confront the enemy in the gates. And at the same time, what the enemy releases, the darks that he releases, it's not going to touch us. The witchcraft, the spells, and, and the, the curses that they are releasing, I can, I can rebuke that in Jesus' name and it will not touch me. Jesus gave his disciples power over the unclean spirits. Yeah, I'm going to give you power to speak to these things. Yeah. If I command an unclean spirit to leave a person, it has to submit. It's subdued to me. It's subdued to the, the name of Jesus Christ. And so if I command it to go, it has to go in the name of Jesus. Yeah. They tremble at the name of Jesus. They tremble. And so we have power to run the earth. Yeah. The earth is given to the sons of God. These are those who have turned the world upside down. Yeah. The world is waiting for the manifestations of the sons of God. All the creation is waiting for you to release what God has put on the inside. Yeah. He's doing things through his, his children. Yeah. Those that are not afraid to speak. Those are the mouths that he's going to fill, that he does not mind filling. Yeah, I'm going to fill this person because they don't hold back. I'm going to fill this person. I'm going to fill their mouths. You're going to open your mouth wide and I'm going to fill it. And it's going to be filled with what I want you to say and how I want you to say. It's going to be filled with the boldness, with the courage, with the authority, with the, the dominion. It's going to be filled. Yeah. And you're going to begin to, to see some things move. You're going to begin to break Things in the spirit. Yeah. Walls are coming down that you can't even see. Walls are coming down. Things are moving out of your way. You don't even see what was in your path before. And because you've opened your mouth, those things are moving out of the way. Yeah. The stumbling blocks that the enemy has placed in your path. You don't even see that they're moving out of the way. It's moving out of the way. Yeah, I'm speaking to things and it's moving. It's moving. Just like how you can command your day in Jesus' name. Yeah. Your day is subject to you. You're not subject to your day, meaning you don't have to have a bad day. And if you are a believer, if you are a son of God, you don't have bad days anymore. You never have any bad days. As long as Jesus is on the throne. Yeah. I'm not going to have any more bad days. I have challenging days. But all is, all is well, as long as he's on the throne, all is well. And so we have to know the power that lies in our mouths. Death and life are in the power of the tongue. If I'm releasing life, then life is going to surround me. And what you take in is what's going to come out. You know, the world says you are what you eat. If I am taking in pollution... If I'm taking in poison, if I'm taking in lust, if I'm taking in pride, if I'm taking in carnality, then of course I'm going to be defenseless against the enemy. Of course I'm going to be fearful. Of course I'm going to feel intimidated at the fact that he's...
He's a lion. Of course, I'm going to be moved and shaken at the fact that he, he has a voice, he has a mouth, and he's speaking to me, of course. Yeah, because I'm taking in all of the wrong things. I'm taking in all of the stuff that I should not be taking in. And so when it's time for me to make a move, then I'm going to have a dull blade on my sword. Yeah, I'm going to have parts of my armor missing because I am not taking in the right kind of things. But if I am one, I am taking in all of the, the things that are spiritually healthy for me and beneficial for me, then when it's time for me to swing my sword, you better believe that I am not going to miss. You better believe that when I strike my sword, I am not going to miss. I'm going to hit what I need to hit. I'm going to stab whatever demon I need to stab. I'm going to bruise whatever serpent, whatever scorpion I need to bruise. Yeah, because I'm taking in the right kind of things and therefore that's going to make me effective and that's going to come out. That's going to come out. Jesus says, out of, he says, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. When I open my mouth, I, I better be building. When I open up my mouth, I better be taking authority and dominion. When I open up my mouth, I better be shifting some things. When I open up my mouth, I better be speaking life. When I open up my mouth, I better be speaking control over my atmosphere. Because that's what I'm taking in. I'm taking in all of the, the good things that I need that's going to benefit me. And so I'm not giving my ears. I'm not giving my eyes. I'm not giving myself to any and everything. Bad counsel. This motivational speaker. This celebrity. This false preacher. This false teacher. This false evangelist. I'm not giving myself to these things. I have the the the... the discernment that I need. I'm sensitive to the voice of God. We need to be sensitive to the voice of God so that we can know when God is speaking and when he's not speaking because the enemy will try and come and pretend like he's God. The word of God says that he presents himself as an angel of light. Yeah. So he will come and if you lack discernment, he will come as God. It won't be God because Jesus says that his sheep hear his voice and they know it and that they will not hearken to the voice of a stranger. But he will come and he will begin to tell you things and it will sound like God and it will cause you to make bad decisions. It will cause you to say the wrong kind of things with your mouth. It will cause you to fall into a state of complaining and, and murmuring and just being loose, speaking things out of emotion, speaking things from an impulsive place. Yeah, it will cause you to fall out of the will of God, your mouth, your words. Yeah, yeah. So you can use your words to cause yourself to be delayed. You can use your words to set up walls when you should be tearing down walls. You can use your words to place chains around yourself when you should be using your words to break the chains. It depends on how you are using your words and what you believe your words are doing. Yeah. This is why so many people don't know that they've cursed their bodies because they've spoken things out of bitterness, they've spoken things out of pride, out of ignorance, out of selfishness. They, they've spoken things. And they don't realize that their words, their words are moving. Their words are taking effect. Yeah, your words are going somewhere just like right now. These words, they're going somewhere. They're doing something. This is why the word of God can say that the word of God is quick and sharper than any two edge sword piercing even to the dividing asunder yeah it's a discerner the word of god because it's a lie it is a discerner yeah that's you can feel that conviction although nobody has said anything you just heard the word and it's convicting you it's cutting you it's piercing through your heart it's piercing through the hardness and the and the bitterness and the stubbornness it's piercing through all of that how is it doing that? Because it's a sword. It's a weapon. And it's active. It's alive. It's alive. No, this, this sword is not dull at all. This sword is sharp. And if you get in the way, it's going to cut. It's going to pierce where it needs to pierce. And so understand that you have power in your word. You have power in your words. And let me tell you something. Your words can go places that you cannot. Just like that satirian that had faith to believe that Jesus, all you have to do is speak it, and I already know that it's going to go somewhere. I already know. You have that faith right there, and I'm telling you, you can do anything. We know that. Jesus says, well, Paul says that we can do all things through Christ, who strengthened strengthen us. And that's not in a carnal sense. That really is saying that I can be abound and I can be abased. Yeah, 
I can be who God wants me to be, where he wants me to be. That's what that word means. That 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 verse means, that, that passage of scripture means. Y'all can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. And so I can speak a word and release it into the to the atmosphere and know that it's taking root. Whether that's me coming against the works of darkness and the works of the enemy, or whether that's me asking the Lord to release revival in, in the earth. Yeah. God sent forth the spirit of repentance. God sent forth your laborers. God raised raise up the intercessors. God raise up those that are that are asleep and they are in, in a state of slumber. Raise up those that are lazy right now. God, break curses. Yeah. Set captives free. Lord, change the hearts of our, our world leaders. Yeah. I can speak these things. I can speak for the Lord to change the heart of my government. I can speak and command for my brothers and sisters on the other side of the, of the planet to be given strength and to have the grace to endure their persecution. I can speak these things. I don't have to go to to Australia to be there and to speak something. You know, I can speak it right here in North America and know by faith that it's going there. No, it's it's being released in the atmosphere. It's gonna it's gonna travel from here all the way to Australia. It's gonna travel from here all the way to Greenland and Iceland. No, it's gonna travel from here all the way to the the Virgin Islands. Yeah, to the Barbados, to the Bahamas, to Jamaica. It's gonna go. It's gonna go. And I have to believe that by faith that my words are doing something and that they're shifting the atmosphere. And so you need, you really do need ears to hear. You need ears to hear. Not everybody is going to hear and perceive. Jesus said, be careful how you hear. You got to be careful with how you hear because you never know when you, you can miss me. You never know when you can miss me. You always have to be sensitive because the spirit of God is always moving. Jesus says that they that are born of the spirit, they are like the wind. You hear the wind, but you don't know where it's coming from and where it's going. He said, so is everyone that is born of the Spirit. And so you got to be careful how you hear. Ask the Lord to make you sensitive to his voice. Ask him to deepen your discernment because we need it in these last and evil days so that we can know how to release the glory that God is putting in us with our mouths and with our words in Jesus' name.